I'm Irish. Welcome to The Piping Show. I've been speaking to Katie McDonald, a piper from Bara, about her musical journey so far. So we'll be hearing a little bit from her later on in an interview. Please take part in our YouTube competition, prizes for which are displayed next to me here. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and after 2,000 subscribers, the three winners will be announced. Here's Helen Urquhart with the news. On Saturday the 18th of February, the National Piping Centre Junior Competition was held. It was a long day, but a great day of piping. Thank you to all the judges, stewards and competitors who took part over the day. The junior champion was Hector Finlayson, the novice champion was Fraser Hamilton, and the chanter champion was Ruby Warren. On Saturday the 25th of February, the Archie Kenneth Quake was held for the 31st time at the RSPS in Edinburgh. The winner was Matthew Kirkwood. On Saturday the 4th of March, the US and Barra was held at the National Piping Centre. This was won overall by Craig Sutherland. Thanks to the Glasgow and US and Barra Association for all the organisation on the day. On Monday the 6th of March, the Competition League for Amateur Solo Pipers live online results were announced from the event on the 11th of March. The winners were, in Grade 1, Charles David Mitchell from Canada, in Grade 2, Joseph Morrison from the USA, Grade 3, John Todd from Scotland, and Grade 4 was Sophie Stringer from Australia. This weekend coming up, on Friday the 10th and Saturday the 11th, sees the RNZ PBA New Zealand and South Pacific Pipe Band Championships take place, over two full days of contests. Good luck to all those who are taking part, and you can find out more at www rnzpba.com and this Saturday the 11th of March sees the Duncan Johnson Memorial Piping Contest happening here at the National Piping Centre. It's B and C grade solo piping contest between McFader Street and Otago Street. All events start from 9am and spectators are welcome. Hello there. This weekend, we'll see the Duncan Johnston Memorial Piping Competition return to the National Piping Centre. I thought this week we'd talk a little bit about Duncan and take a look at a couple of his books. Duncan was born in Glasgow in 1925 to parents from the West Coast. His dad, Alexander, was from Bendecula, and his mother, Kate, was from Barra. Interestingly, Kate was the sister of Father John Macmillan of Barra, for whom the 2-4 March is named. As I've mentioned on this program before, Duncan was first taught in Glasgow by a policeman called Angus Campbell, who learned from Willie Laurie and John McCall. Duncan would go on to fight in the latter half of the, the Second World War, working in the Navy, and upon return to Glasgow, began instruction under Donald McLean and Roddy MacDonald. Studying under these tutors and with his father, and he would start going back to the, to the West Coast, to the Western Isles, and that's really where that sort of association of Duncan Johnson and West Coast style playing starts to develop. Duncan wasn't particularly interested in competing famously, so um, he never competed at Oban or Inverness, although apparently he did learn the tunes for those contests every year. However, it's impossible to talk about Duncan Johnson and not mention him winning the inaugural SPA knockout in 1964 against Donald McLeod. Duncan would go on to become not only a prolific composer, but a great teacher. He was a teacher at the College of Piping up until 1980, and in 1980 he started his own piping school, where he would go on to teach players such as Roddy McLeod and Finley McDonald, the current director of piping here at the Piping Centre, and our former principal. So we can see Duncan's influence in this building even to this day. Duncan sadly passed away in 1999 and under the direction of our former principal, the National Piping Centre began the Duncan Johnston Memorial Competition in the year 2000. I have here a couple of books that belonged to Duncan Johnston that were very kindly donated by his family. We have his copy of the first edition of the Scots Guards, well, the first volume of the Scots Guards, and also his collection of Donald McLeod's books. And if we look on the inside cover of each of these collections, we can see Duncan's name. When I was preparing for this segment, I asked Finley McDonald about these books to get a little bit of history about them, how to become to have them, and 
I had them with me at the time, and Finley commented that he remembers these books from when he was studying, and he remembers being taught out of them. These books are part of our rare and valuable books collection for obvious reason. However, they are available to view upon request. Katie, thanks for spending some time with us after the Weekend Club to chat to us a little bit about your piping upbringing and what you're up to these days. No worries. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into piping initially? Because I think for a lot of people who live on the mainland, it's maybe quite a different experience. Yeah, so um, being brought up, I was always around trad music, um, hearing piping music, that sort of thing. And my mum used to play the pipes. Um, and then as she got older, it was just the chanter for a while, but she used to take classes on Barra and my older sister would go to them. <clears throat> so I used to tag along and I would sit in the corner and just listen. And then over time, um, it got to the age where I was about eight, I think, seven, eight. Um, and I myself started going and there was a chanter class before my mum's piping class. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just start attending that. So I think that's what initially brought me into contact with piping and piping lessons was through my mum and the fact that she was a teacher herself. Yeah. Um, so that's what started me off, I'd say. Yeah, and who were the teachers around that time? So at that time, it was Dolph Atrick Nicholson that, and still is, I think he still does some, some teaching. He would take um, the classes and so would my mum. So sometimes I think they would do a chanter class together and they'd split, split it up. And then following would be a piping class for two hours for the older ones. Um, so they so they were the two people. Once I kind of got on to the pipes and that, though my mum had stopped, mm -hmm. um, so it was just Dolph Atrick that that taught me in in those years. Yeah, and he's taught a, a huge amount of people, including his son, yeah, um, Duncan. And what what were the the numbers in the classes, and how have you seen that kind of maybe change over the years? Yeah, so when I started, there was actually a lot of us. Um, I think kind of when I was younger and when I started playing, it was kind of the trendy thing to do. It's what everyone was kind of getting into and mm -hmm. the phage was kind of encouraging a lot of people to start. So um, when I began, there must have been about um, seven or eight of us maybe. Um, but then that was just kind of in my age group. There was a few yeah. that were older that were, you know, getting onto the pipe. So I would say in classes, there were maybe a good like 14, 15 of us, which is quite a lot for... It's quite a high percentage yeah, of the island. Yeah, exactly, for, such, way, yeah. for such a small place. And then on top of that, you'd have your maybe like seven pipers in the piping class. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a lot and it was quite nice as well because because my mum, when I was wee, would often take the piping class. I'd sit in on that. Um, so that was always a wee boost for me to like, oh, I want to get into that class. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty big classes, to be honest, yeah. for, for such a small place. And I suppose seeing that progression as well, like seeing your own path to what you can end mm -hmm. up doing, I think that's really important for young kids. And it is. it's something that we're definitely trying to emulate a little bit in the weekend classes for sure. that you've been teaching on as well. So, um, yeah, well, what happened after you got onto the pipes, um, kind of between then and leaving school, what, what was the sort of like journey in terms of your school because I, I know you changed school yeah. um, to do with the pipes as well so tell us a bit about that. So I got in, onto the pipes when I was around I think I've maybe got my times mixed up and I think it was maybe nine-ish mm -hmm. um, and then Dolph Atrick taught me right up until I was about 15 um, and I'd go to competitions um, in US or sometimes I travel down to Oban, Glasgow and that's kind of how I know a lot of the people that I see now like in the piping centre even working here and stuff. So Dolph Atrick took me through all of that and he was great, I can't praise him enough for that. Um, and US had a pipe band as well but um, it was just too much travelling and I don't think they were competing as much at that time so I got to fourth year and I was actually changing schools um, just for a few different reasons. And one of the things that swayed me was whether the school had a pipe band. So I ended up going to Dollar for the last three years for S4, 5 and 6. And they had a pipe band and of course, really good. So I was a bit nervous, I had to do an addition um, and it was completely not what I was used to. Like, yeah. they're so um, like professional almost in the sense that the minute they start, 
the chanter, like, you know, you're going into pipes and then it's kind of pipe band format. I had no idea about any of this. So I felt like I was walking into an absolute, I don't know, just something I'd never experienced before. So yeah. it's, it went from being in Dolph Atherick's house on like a Thursday evening, playing MSRs and some jigs and just learning and having a cup of tea to all of a sudden being in like a room with 20 other pipers who knew everything and I just felt so out of place. But that's where I ended up. Um, so I ended up from Castle Bay until I was about 15 with Dolph Atherick to then moving to, to Dollar where I had, um, it was Matt Wilson that taught me there for three years. Mm -hmm. So that was my, my, tra my wee random transition in school. Yeah. And when you were there, um, because obviously when I first met you, you must have been maybe like, I don't know, 11 or 12? Yeah, 12 maybe. Because uh, of course my wee sister was at the Fish yeah. uh, in the summer holidays. And um, so I was aware that like what her age was, that you were the same age as her. And you were, I remember being like, that is a very, very good piper. So <laughs> for you to feel like you were a bit unsure to go to Dollar, how did that maybe change? Did you gain more confidence as you for sure. ran, you rose through the ranks a little bit? And for how did sure. you end up, like, were you doing a bit of leadership as well? Yeah, so <clears throat> when I first started off, it wasn't even so much that we were at different levels of piping or that I was maybe at a disadvantage in that sense. I just felt as though... Um, when they go through the pipe bands they have a younger one and then they have like they have their novice B and then their novice A and then they have their juvenile so they've already gained a bit of experience of like how pipe bands work like even things like um you know when you start up and the like roles and stuff I had no idea what any of that was mm -hmm. um so I definitely learned a lot but also it was kind of I, I went straight into the juvenile band so I didn't really have too much time to adjust so I just had to really kind of dive straight into it so there was a lot of mistakes there was a lot of doing things wrong like messing up but thankfully like they're so supportive there and I had Matt like helping me through it all and there was other people in the same boat as me that had <coughs> just joined um, there was a boy from Aden in the same boat so it's not like I, I was doing anything out of the ordinary but it definitely gave me a lot of confidence and I even say that to this day like moving schools was one thing but then having being thrown into that in the middle of like catching up on a year of study because I had to catch mm. up on my third year stuff because they had a different like plan so I was doing that as well as as the pipe band so yeah I kind of just learned to persevere and that you just need to go with it and it definitely gave me some confidence and then as you're mentioning like leadership so I did fourth and fifth year with the juvenile band and in sixth year I became pipe major Great. which was yeah. yeah it was exciting but at the same time it was a lot of pressure you know but someone has to take that and it was as I said like I had a great group around me like the band were great all the boys it was all boys that were were piping with me they were Who all were some great. of the names that you were you were leading um so Ruthie Brown he was here last week he was stewarding um I'm trying to think who else um Andrew Ferguson um, he, he was in the band as well. Finlay Cameron, he was there too. Um, I'm trying to think who else. It seems like you're mentioning a lot of people that play in Field Marshal. Yeah, Saturday, I know, so. I think there's a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> I must have skipped out on. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, so there's, there's, there was them boys, but they were great. And even to this day, like when I see them, sometimes I pass them like outside of Tago Street or something. Yeah. And, they're all great. So yeah, so I did that for the last year and that was fun. And again, even that in itself gave me so much confidence and like just the ability to be able to like do things on my own and initiate things and um, just take a bit more leadership and things. So yeah. well, great that's, experience. That's really excellent. And yeah, I'm not surprised having heard you when you were <laughs> about 11, 12, that you would probably do something like that. Yeah. And when you left school, what were your plans um, and what are you kind of doing? I know you're in a very stressful time at university at the moment. <laughs> so what, yeah. what's kind of been your path? Um, how has your your piping changed? Um, and, you know, obviously some you've got to have a little bit of give when you're focusing on something sure. else. So yeah. what, what are you studying? How did you decide to do that? So when I left Dollar, I was initially planning on doing veterinary medicine. So I'd applied for that, I had conditions, but I didn't meet them in sixth year. So all of a sudden, like, my world came tumbling down. I was like, <laughs> ah, I don't have a backup. So I left that. Um, well, I didn't have a choice. I left that and I just went home for the year and I took a year out. Was still doing some piping and stuff because uh, I was at home. So I wasn't in a like a boarding house. So it was 
much easier. Um, playing a wee bit and I decided to do a like a higher course in Gaelic mm -hmm. through, they're called eSchool. So basically it's just a school but they run it online and it's all through Gaelic. So I did my higher Gaelic and I really, really enjoyed it. I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm going to do Gaelic at university. I got this, I think being away from home for so long, it made me appreciate like the culture and like Gaelic and everything that came with the Western Isles that I didn't realise until I left. Mm -hmm. So going back home, I kind of got this newborn like feeling of, oh, I really want to go back into that and like do it in, in my career. So I did Gaelic and then I took a, pol a module in politics. So this is after my year out. Um, and that was at Glasgow University. So I'm just coming to an end with that now. Um, and when I, when, just before COVID um, hit, I was considering joining a band and I was looking at a few um, and then COVID hit and I went home and everything kind of went to pot. And then by the time I came out again, I was just kind of thrown into the third year and I thought I just have too much on right now to be joining bands and getting into that too much right now. Um, but of course, then I started in here. <laughs> so that's been a nice wee release and a way kind of back into it again um, that I think think I kind of lost through Covid and leaving school and um, yeah so that that was kind of my journey once I left school um, yeah. and now that I'm finishing up uni. Yeah well I think it's a really great thing that you did decide to come and do some teaching because there are so many uh, young girls in particular who are in yeah. the piping club that I think you're an excellent role model for and of course you've been doing a bit of judging at the the junior competition as well yeah um, which is not an easy thing to do either <laughs> no. and yeah I'm just really pleased that piping is um, part of your maybe week to week life again yeah, and sure. yeah hopefully after you've finished your degree um, once you've got this dissertation out of the way you'll you'll be uh, in here maybe a little bit more. Yeah for sure. Um, no pressure but it would be great <laughs> to have you in here so um, yeah thank you so much for chatting to us. You're welcome. And um, yeah all the best. Thank with, you. With the dissertation. <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers.